Howdy everyone, Warsarcy here, and today we'll be looking at Brigadine, The Legend of Inertia. Brigadine is a turn-based strategy game where you play as one of six nations and try to eliminate the other nations and become the sole ruler of Inertia. The main game starts off picking a ruler, with the cool thing being that that character that rules that nation has their own intro cutscene, as well as their own story and multiple other cutscenes throughout their campaign. Each ruler starts off with different amounts of things such as bases and knights. Personally, I prefer starting with less bases because that means that your knights can traverse to the edges of your territory faster and stack up to easier start invading other bases faster. The game plays somewhat similar to other strategy games, but I started off with the tutorial just to be safe. It's very detailed and leads you step by step through every action you'll be performing to ensure that you know what you're doing. It isn't 100% necessary to play the tutorial however, as the main story will pretty much give you most of the same tips whenever you open certain menus. The game has two phases, the organization phase where you configure your equipment, summon monsters, move troops, change their classes, and send them out on quests, which can be to gather equipment that will increase character stats or simply gain XP to level up. Occasionally, you'll come across a new rune knight that will join you. One thing I really want to praise is that it's all voice acted. From the story cutscenes to the recruitment cutscenes, even combat dialogue, it's all voiced, even if it's in Japanese. A lot of games that have a sort of visual novelesque cutscene system will have some of the cutscenes voiced, while the rest of it is just read only, which is something that this game decided against doing. Another cool thing I noticed while playing as the Norzalio Kingdom is that some of the story cutscenes seem to play depending on which character was in which location, which if intentional was a really cool detail as it creates unique interactions between characters both friendly and hostile. So after the organization phase comes the attack phase. This is where you invade and get invaded. You can have up to three knights participate in a battle regardless of offense or defense. Each knight and their monsters will have turns based on who is the strongest. So you, if yours is the strongest, they'll go first, followed by the next strongest in line. You have a goal to defeat the enemy troops or make them retreat. And if you're in offensive, you can win by default by having a troop on the castle space when all turns have passed. The battling is simple, whereas you can move a set amount of spaces and have to keep your monsters semi-close to their knight or else they'll have weakened stats. You can use various magical spells or skills, but to use magic, you have to sacrifice moving that turn to use them instead, whereas skills such as normal attacks can be used if you stop on a space beside an enemy unit. When using normal attacks that physically hit, the defending unit will counterattack, so you have to be strategic by keeping track of the aftermath that it gives you a preview of, which shows you how much damage the enemy is expected to take, as well as how much damage you are expected to take in return. Keeping this in mind, when it comes to attacking higher level units, it's sometimes best to refrain from attacking them or letting another unit do the attacking instead, especially if your unit is low on health, as it usually results in sacrificing one of your monsters to only leave a small dent in their health which you can revive monsters but you have to get a revive stone and honestly i feel it's more just worth trying to keep them alive and keeping them high level you know another cool feature that is sometimes when you defeat an enemy knight before their monsters you'll actually be able to capture one of their monsters and make it your own there are terrain effects that will affect the unit's mobility accuracy and evasion each unit has their own preferred terrain type like mountain sky etc that will give them an advantage when they're on it increasing their move accuracy and evasiveness. Units have classes that they can change and unlock once they level up further. The classes of actual troops are more elaborate as they can master skills and carry them over when they upgrade or change classes. Whereas monsters can change classes as well but it's a little more limited and slightly changes their forms and increases their stats at the cost of taking up more mana spendage to have them in the party. So when I first started this game I was slightly intimidated by how much there is to this game mostly because of how many tutorials there were but when i started my first campaign those concerns were immediately extinguished as it's really not a hard game to get the hang of 
it's a very strategic game both in and out of battles in battles it's about knowing what units to send after which enemies to ensure you lose as little troops as possible while out of battles it involves knowing which knights to send on quests at which bases and which times and which ones to leave there because if you leave a base unoccupied while all the troops are out questing the enemy will be likely to just enter your base and capture it with no contest which if you lose all of your bases, it's an automatic game over. Due to this strategic element, I find I spend a lot longer in this game than in others just looking over everything and double checking, as one wrong move can give the enemy an easy time claiming your bases. In the end, I had a lot of fun with this game and still plan to play even more of it as it's got great replayability, not only with playing as the other nations, but the alternative chapter challenge mode you unlock when you beat the game. Heck, even just replaying the same nation again is fun because you can always play it in a different way each time. This game also has a demo, so if you want to try it before you buy it, you can do so by playing up to 10 seasons of the 24 seasons or holding 7 or more bases. I'd highly recommend it as it's a fun game that's easy to pick up and play. And if you do so and decide to buy it, it's available on the eShop for $50. I'd like to thank HappyNet Corporation for sending me the review key. This is WarsRC on the Game Clips channel, and I'm out.